Okay, so this one is going to be called the administrative process bill in equity. Okay, and this is going to be something that you use a notary with. Now, the last couple of weeks, I've spent hours and hours and hours uh, putting some documents together. Uh, Yusuf L., one man out. The Redemption Manual, uh, UR Law, uh, a lot of different sources, uh, cutting and pasting, and so let's go through this. So you have several documents, but it's going to start with a notice of acceptance, okay? And the first thing you're going to try to do is get the child support agent that is assigned to your case, you want to call them, you want to write them a letter, and you want to ask for a payoff statement, okay? And in that payoff statement, you're going to eventually get here to the certificate of non-response, okay? Now, I've started filling this in. <clears throat> you can probably um, get these documents from me or you can find them online and put them together yourself but this is the goal right here is the certificate of non-response that is going to be mailed by the notary not from you okay so let's look at a couple documents here so first thing is this is a one page one page document okay and it's going to have a couple of things attached to it. It's going to have an authorization. Well, what is that? It's going to have instructions. Well, what is that? And it's going to have a statement of account. Okay? These are going to be attached to your notice of acceptance. Okay? This is a conditional acceptance. I please be advised that I have accepted your presentment. Okay? For assessed value not just accepted for value, but assessed value, which means that is what it says on the payoff statement. And I am returning it to you in exchange for closure and settlement of the account. Okay, for me, it's that one. Please send the confirmation that the stated obligation for account referenced has been adjusted and settled to the address shown above which is going to be the notary, okay? Or send a notice of dishonor from a qualified third party. Now, let's explain a few things. Try to keep this short. The notary is someone that works for the Secretary of State. That's where they get their notary certification. certification. Um, that's where they get their power, and they are considered a third party, okay? And they are also considered... Uh, an officer of the court because they have that notary book, they have that notary stamp, and they are given their certification from the Secretary of State. They are way above you, okay? So it took me three phone calls. The first two said, I don't know what you're talking about. The last lady that I talked to, Cheryl, a hundred bucks. She'll do the whole thing for me. I told her exactly what I'm trying to do. She said, absolutely, I'll, I can do that for you. So what you're going to do is try to use a notary to send these documents. You are not going to respond to these people if they send you anything in the mail. You are going to tell them to send it to the notary, and they must have everything notarized. Okay? Qualified third party. See that right there? So I am enclosing an authorization for you to facilitate the use of my credit to discharge all court charges and obligations that may apply. The instructions, so you've got authorization, you've got instructions, and the statement of account, okay? Authorization, instructions, statement of account. What are those? We'll go through that here in a minute. The instruction statement account are attached for your convenience. The Secretary of Treasury is also being notified by a letter of authorization. What's a letter of authorization? We'll get to that. 
that I have utilized my credit for this purpose. Okay, let's stop. Number one, there is no fucking money. Okay, it's all debt and it's all credit. You are the creditor. They are not the creditor. They are debtors. They are bankrupt corporations. They are insolvent and they somehow got your name and a number and they are trying to get you to contract with them so they can get some of your credit. Okay? You do not have to be a secured party to do this. However, you do have to file a bond with the Secretary of Treasury at the Department of Treasury at an address that I'll show you in a minute. Okay? You do not have to be a secured party. You don't have to spend the thousand bucks, fifteen hundred, seventeen hundred, five hundred, whatever it is. You don't have to do all that. Okay? This is about an administrative process that you put together so that you can take these people to court and book their ass in court for an administrative procedures act. That's where all this comes from. Okay? This is possibly uh, the money shot right here. Now, remember, notice to agents, notice to principal. Okay? That means I don't care who gets it. Okay? You, whether it's the agent or the director or some lonely clerk in the mailroom, it doesn't matter. You got it. There's the certified mail number. I have a document from the notary. And it's in her book that says, you received this. Your refusal to send confirmation or a notice of dishonor will in no way negate the settlement and will be your agreement that you and your agency have no capacity to pursue collection and that further collection efforts confirm your agreement that you and your agency collectively and severally which means together and separate, owe me a million dollars. And I, my debtor, may take all necessary steps to secure its claim to the debt owed to it and collect. Thank you for your immediate attention to this matter. Now, I'm going to put in here at the end, you have 10 days, okay? Okay. Now, you usually give them 10 days. I'm going to give them 15 days. I'm going to give them two weeks. I'm going to go from July 1st to July 15th. Okay? Notice of acceptance. Okay? I accept your presentment. What is that? That is your statement, payoff statement that you got from them. Okay. Then what do you do? So the second one would be a notice of default and an opportunity to cure. Again, certified mail. It's coming from the notary. She has already wrote down in her book that you sent something on July 1st. I sent you, not you. She did. They did. They sent you a notice of acceptance and a request that you send confirmation that it has been adjusted and settled or send a notice of dishonor from a third party. It was sent registered mail. Okay. You'll have the registered mail put in there. Return retreat receipt requested with an affidavit of mailing. Okay. We all know what those are. You put those in with everything that you do. Certificate of service, affidavit of mailing, whatever you want to call it. Copies of the correspondence are included herein. So you send them another copy of the first issue of documents that you sent, right? And you send them to them again because in the event your dishonor through non-performance and non-response was unintentional or due to reasonable neglect, mistake, or impossibility, I am attaching a copy of the same presentment to this notice of non-response. Please send confirmation that the account is closed and adjusted and settled to the address shown above or send a notice of dishonor from a third qualified third party. Okay, again, you're not contracting with these people. You're just asking them to go through a third party. Okay, if you have an excuse for not performing, please mail your particular statement to me at the address noted above. Okay, don't 
send me another one of your goddamn statements that say you owe me. Your specific performance or statement is expected no later than 10 days from the date this notice is postmarked. Thank you if you fail to cure the breach. Okay, so all these little terms in here, man. Notice of dishonor, notice of default, okay? Reasonable neglect, mistake, impossibility. These are all legal terms, okay? Non-performance, non-response, unintentional, okay? Presentment, these are all legal terms. And you don't have to have a 40-page document and explain to them what they're doing wrong, okay? You are trying to stay in honor. So, the first one is notice of acceptance, right? Notice of acceptance sent by the notary. Now, let's go back to that real quick and let me show you some stuff. So, in your notice of acceptance, we talked about a few things. Authorization, instructions, statement of account. Okay, so basically what you're doing is you're saying, I have accepted your presentment. I have accepted, right, for assessed value, and I am returning it to you in exchange for closure and settlement. Well, they need more than that. Okay, so what do they need? Well, they need instructions, and they need some kind of negotiable instrument right? They need a check. They need a money order. They need some cash. They need some kind of negotiable instrument, okay? And we'll get to that in a second. So the instructions and the statement of account, what the hell are those? Well, how about one of these? So on the top, you would put your debtor, who it's from, the creditor's name, right? And you would just write statement of account. You would write the balance of the charges, which is ever whatever it says on your payoff amount that you called and asked for, right? Discharge through your bonded bill of exchange. That would be the bond that you sent the Secretary of Treasury. And what you are doing is called a bill of exchange, okay? So let's say it says $10,000. They say you owe us $10,000. You put $10,000 on this bill of exchange. Put that amount right there. And guess what? 10 minus 10 is zero. The balance shown reflects my good faith statement of account for the account indicated. The account representative, that would be me, or his designee may correct or approve the statement, blah, 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 no 14 days pursuant to... UCC 9-210, you might want to look that up. And failure to correct and return the skate within two weeks constitutes your agreement with the accounting after which you and your agents may only make up a claim for the amount this statement shows, which is what? Zero. So that's pretty simple, right? Statement of account. Okay, so what about instructions? What about a bill of exchange? What is that? So this is one, I'm not going to be using this one because this one doesn't have all the documents that, or all the uh, numbers and account numbers and stuff because I am a secured party. Um, but this is one of them. Uh, just really quick, what does it say? It says a bill of exchange fulfills the legal definition of a negotiable instrument, which is currency, and also per UCC 3-104, and legally discharges any alleged debt, okay? Refusal to accept this discharge of debt, okay? So if they just send it back to you and say, we don't take this, what the hell is this? This is just a worthless piece of paper. Well, according to UCC 3-603, if tender of payment of an obligation to pay an instrument is made to the person entitled to enforce the instrument, which is them, and the tender is refused, there is discharge. Ha! Look at that. To the extent of the amount of the tender, which means the amount you wrote on the statement of account and on the bill of exchange. Okay? So this doesn't have all the information that I need because I filed my paperwork. 
However, this one does. And this has all the instructions and you're going to put your uh, accepted for value stamp. You're going to have, I'm going to get one of these made up. It's going to have my EIN number on it, my bond number. Okay. It's going to have everything on it. It's going to have all, it tells you exactly what to do, where to put all the stuff, preparing your instrument. Here's your instrument. The obligation of the draw E secretary of the treasury through the Bailey of claimants financial institution TTL department that's taxes and something else and liens and loans department whatever hereof arises out of the want of consideration for the pledge and the redemption of the pledge house joint resolution 192 public law 7310 represented by the attached claim accepted for value and bearing the account number blah 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 so this right here is dope okay I'm going to fill all this in. This is basically a check. This is a negotiable instrument. And look at this. Here's the instructions. Processing of a bill of exchange. Look at that. And it's all right there. And if you follow it, it says John Snow, but it's actually Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, Steven Mnuchin. How to do it, what to do, follow it to the letter and da, 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 how to print out a statement of account here's the statement of account that i showed you here's another bill of exchange this is a copy that goes okay so here's one more thing now wait a minute this is a notice of acceptance well yes you are accepting it when you get something in the mail from rocky mountain power and they have a thing on the bottom that says pay this amount and it has a little envelope in there and you pull out your checkbook right and you write a check and you slip it in that envelope and send it back to them what do you send back with it they already have the instructions they know what to do with a bill of exchange right you're exchanging a piece of paper for some federal reserve notes that are stuck in your account correct okay well, what I'm doing is I'm giving them a bill of exchange. I'm giving them a check. I'm giving them a discharge piece of paper, just like a Federal Reserve note, just like a check, a money order, cashier's check. It's the same goddamn thing because what? There's no money, bro. There is only debit and credit and here's the instructions on how to process this check that's what it is it's a check okay so so that I have to I don't have to go back and forth you know what a bill of exchange is you know what the instructions look like we're going to attach them to the notice of acceptance and we're going to give them a statement of account that shows very clearly that there is now a balance of zero right so what's going to happen they're probably going to oh here's one more thing too because you are the creditor you have to authorize and call steve mnuchin which, of course, you can't call him, so you have to authorize this document, correct? So, if somebody goes to the bank with one of your checks, you have to have what? You have to have an authorized signature. You have to authorize the use of that instrument, correct? Well, then I guess I should send a notice of pre-authorized use of my credit to Mr. Mnuchin, the trustee of my account. So I'm going to authorize ORS to use my exemption through Fedwire and the TTL, remember that? That's the Treasury Tax and Liens or Loans account 
of the claimant's bank. I don't care who they bank through, but it's the claimant's bank to settle the above referenced account by adjustment and set off through the undersized private set off account as follows. You credit to the order of the Office of Recovery Services. You put in the amount. Further credit to the account number from the bill or the presentment or the payoff statement that they gave you. You put in the debtor. Who's that? That's the all caps. And then that would be your Social Security number with dashes. The set off account number is my number on a closed account, a private account, which is your Social Security without dashes. And I have it registered with the Department of Treasury. And there's my original mail number that I sent it to them for the bond that's already being held by the Secretary of Treasury, Steve Mnuchin. So I send them a notice of pre-authorized use of credit, send this to Mnuchin, and I let him know, hey, these people are coming at you for this amount on this account number. Please set off and discharge this presentment they're sending and use this bond that you've already got. Void were prohibited by law. Okay? Now that doesn't sound too bad so far, right? That all sounds above board. So you're going to send this with the authorization pre-authorization to Mr. Mnuchin, the instructions, the bill of exchange, and the statement of account. And you're going to send all that stuff, not you, the notary is going to send it, right? And that woman, that man, that little turd that is a clerk is not going to know what to do with that. So they're probably going to throw it away or whatever. It doesn't matter because... When they don't respond, your notary is going to send a second document that says, hey, I send you that stuff. What happened? And then the coup de grace, the coup de grace, the sword in the heart is the certificate of non-response. Okay? ORS case number, what is this regarding? This certificate of non-response is presented as evidence of dishonor. Pursuant to legal authority, as codified in 3-305, you should look that up, that is dishonor and evidence of dishonor, and 1202, which is notice. You gave them notice, and you sent them instructions and you sent a pre-authorized use of my credit, you sent them a bill of exchange, as soon as they accepted that registered mail, as soon as it is postmarked, it is discharged. Now, whether they follow the instructions or not and send it to Mnuchin, and 15 days later they transfer that money, that, that uh, electrical charge, through an account and change some numbers or well, I don't give a shit. Okay. This is you, uh, Utah code annotated 70 a three dash five Oh five. That's where you can find it in Utah code under evidence of dishonor and notice notice is two Oh two. So I Cheryl, the notary public who verified ORS dishonor of me, Notice of acceptance, okay? This is going to be your third document that goes out. And it's just going to say what you did. July 1st, I sent a letter, notice of acceptance, with attachments. What were the attachments? All the stuff to discharge the debt. On Monday, record shows I mailed, not you, she mailed, notice of default, okay? Verified, return, return, return uh, receipt required. Affidavit of mailing, after acceptance of both mailings, the office refused to send the confirmation that the account has been closed, adjusted, settled, or a notice of dishonor from a qualified third party, excusing their refusal, right? Now remember, bro, this isn't coming from you. 
This is going to and coming from a notary public, an officer of the court. The Office of Recovery Services did not cure their dishonor. They gave no reason to confirm in the account and they are in dishonor. Therefore, based on the foregoing facts, I certify that the office dishonored me and me, dishonored Doug and me through their non-response. And they thereby agree, accepted their presentment, exchanged his exemptment for the discharge, okay, presented authorization for the use of his credit to set off all obligations, included processing instructions so they can't come back at you and say, dude, we don't know what the hell to do with this. This is bullshit. Well, did you read the fucking instructions? I included a statement of account showing a zero balance and I sent a letter to the credit uh, of, of uh, credit authorizing my credit to the Secretary of Treasury using an exact, whoops, shouldn't have had that on there, uh, and return the presentment along with a negotiable instrument for discharge. Did I do all that? I did. Further, the office agreed that their refusal to send confirmation or a notice of dishonor from a qualified third party in no way negates the fact that this account is settled. Okay? We're going to change this to $1 million right now. Okay, sorry about that. You can probably stop it and get that number. I don't care. I got a claim on it anyway. Uh, and Douglas Mr. Broomey may take all necessary steps to secure his claim, blah, 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 blah. Okay? So basically what you've done is you have once again created an estoppel. Okay? So what is your next move once the notary gives you these three documents and they haven't responded. Well, according to everything I have been studying, it is called a bill in equity. Okay, what is equity? What is private? Okay, what are you trying to do, man? Okay, well, what, what's the end game here? The end game is to get these fucking dicks to leave you alone, right? That's all I want, man. I want freedom. I want happiness. I want you to leave me alone and stop. Just, just stop, okay? Leave me alone, dude. I don't owe you. I don't know you. And I don't owe you, okay? So, here's the last thing really quick. Bill and equity. You're going to file it in federal district court. This is for the state of Utah. Here's the plaintiff and here's the defendant. This is an amended complaint. The case number is going to go right there. Now, jurisdiction in this matter is hereby granted by Douglas Mumy. So, who grants jurisdiction? I do. And I am the authorized representative for the all cap name. By way of sufficiency of pleadings, see affidavit in support. Okay? So you'll have to have a you'll have to have an affidavit of support of this bill in equity. Here it is. It's ready to go. It's all signed. It basically says what we did and that I used the notary and they're in dis, uh, they're in dishonor. Once again, jurisdiction in this matter is granted by me authorized representative of the corporation doing business by way of sufficiency of pleadings. The venue of this court is correct because all caps does business in the state of Utah and Douglas Richard Mooney is diverse, which means I'm not in the United States, but I am doing business in the United States and the amount in controversy exceeds 75000 who are the parties? The party is the all caps name who has domiciled in the state of Utah. That's a corporation, corporation for over one year. The Office of Recovery Services, whether it's federal, whether it's run by the feds, 
they operate and they reside in the jurisdiction of the United States and they do business in Utah, right? Okay, we got them so far. Here's the facts. The plaintiff, that's me, I have exhausted my administrative remedy and I come to this court of equity with clean hands and in good faith. And what does that mean? Well, see a notice of acceptance, notice of default, and certificate of non-response. That would be your exhibits that you're going to place into evidence. Plaintiff has established a judgment in estoppel. You, the defendant, as evidenced by attached certificate of non-response. That one right there. Certified by the notary. It's not certified by me. A notary public of the state of Utah did it. Not me. These are some things you might want to look up. Raised judicata, stare decisive. The plaintiff's administrative remedy is raised judicata. What does that mean? That means it's already been adjudicated. By who? The notary. Failure of the defendant to respond in this matter is stare decisis. What does that mean? It means it's already been decided. By who? By the notary. She's got it in her book. You didn't respond. You are in dishonor. The plaintiff's administrative remedy is ripe for judicial review and there are no facts in controversy. Why? Because it's already been decided. What's the legal claim? The legal claim is that the plaintiff is entitled to relief. Remember all that bullshit they kept giving you about, well, you never uh, stated a claim upon relief, which can, which, you know, relief can be granted and all that. Well, here it is, bitches. Here's my relief right here. I am so clear as to what my relief is, and I am entitled to relief. The defendant is a stopped for failure to respond to the original administrative process. The plaintiff has placed the facts and law before this honorable court. Now, what are the facts? Here's the facts right here. Now, remember that other thing that I wrote to the governor? I will not, per, uh, I will not participate in public controversy. There is no controversy, bro. It's already been decided, not by me, by your decisions to not um, answer an officer of the court. What's the relief I seek? Plaintiff requests judicial review of my remedy. The plaintiff requests the court find the facts and execute on the law of the contract. God, I'd love to see the contract. Well, we have a contract right up here and you are in dishonor. Okay? And I lay all the facts and the law in front of the court. There is no controversy. Plaintiff requests summary judgment on his administrative remedy. And the plaintiff requests the court to order the defendant to pay me $1 million. Plaintiff requests the court to release the order of the court to Douglas Richard Mooney, all caps, respectfully submitted by the authorized representative, Okay, notarized, and of course, certificate of service. So, <laughs> uh, I really feel good about this one. Stay tuned.